Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update. This month, lacrosse returns to Howard Community College. Coach Faust's Dragons battle Suffolk in a top 10 showdown. Then women's lacrosse looks to send Suffolk home empty-handed. Mary Lee Adams closes the show with a profile of Canadian sharpshooters Jared and Dylan Riley in an all-new Dragon close-up. Men's lacrosse leads off. The Dragons host College of Southern Maryland. Mike Leshner anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Our analyst coached at Howard for 11 years. In his playing days, he helped Towson State reach the national championship in 91 and the national quarterfinals in 92. It's a pleasure to welcome Mike Jones. Great to be here. Howard enters the game ranked sixth in the NJCAA preseason poll. The Dragons opened the season against six-time defending national champion Onondaga. The Lasers held Howard to just four goals in a humbling one-sided loss for the Dragons. Howard needs to recover any lost confidence right away. This is the first Region 20 game. Howard can't afford a letdown. Mike, what do you expect to see from Howard? Well, coming off the tough loss to Onondaga, it's important for the Dragons to really rebound in this game. Uh, that means quick ball movement, face-offs are going to be really important, and a solid defensive effort. College of Southern Maryland is just in their second year as a program. They won two games a year ago. Howard ended their inaugural season in the Region 20 quarterfinal. Numbers could be an issue. CSM dresses just 17 players. Howard has 27 on the roster. The Hawks are the underdog today. Coach, what do you expect to see from CSM? Well, it's important for the College of Southern Maryland to really understand the speed the game is played at this level. They have a couple of very talented players, but as always, stepping up to the next level, it takes some getting used to. I can sympathize with CSM. When we started the program here at Howard, it took a couple of years for us to get onto the map, uh, especially when we only had 12 players the first year. The Dirty Dozen, we affectionately called them. Um, we took it one step at a time. CSM needs to do that too. It might not come in the win column yet, but there's aspects of their game that they can build upon. Region 20 lacrosse gets underway. Howard CSM is next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First quarter, CSM off to a good start, a one nothing lead for the Hawks. Howard running their offense. Cody Martin takes the pass, feeds Daniel Chu. Chu with the overhand right, changes planes and beats the goalie low. Here Howard's doing a good job of finding the seams, which creates an open shooting lane for Chu. After a CSM turnover, Howard is starting to dictate the action with a long possession. Southern Maryland is ball watching here. All seven defensive players are facing the ball, which allows Dylan Riley to sneak right onto the crease. Daniel Chu, looking to make a run at the short stick. Chu dodges. Draws the slide, goes to Jared Riley, and he's able to finish the ball. Same thing, different play. All seven defensive players are facing the ball here. Second quarter, Howard has scored four unanswered to take control. Jerron Brooks, long pass, he connects with Paris Williams on the clear. Williams attacks the unsettled situation, delivers a good ball to Cody Martin, and he buries it. Nice cut and finish by Cody Martin off the feed from Williams. That play really shows Cody Martin's lacrosse IQ. Second half, failed clears are killing CSM. The Hawks have six failed clears in the first half. Heads up play by Martin to prevent the turnover. Cody Martin takes a run at the short. He gets the upper hand, a four goal game for the sophomore out of Middletown, Maryland. This play really shows Cody's athleticism. CSM with another failed clear. Andrew Fisher can't control the long pass. Zach McElroy flies in, wins the ground ball for Howard. McElroy clears the ball single-handedly for the Dragons. Jared Riley now works it to Austin Mitchell. He finds Dylan Riley on the doorstep. McElroy does a good job starting this play with the ground ball in transition. Southern Maryland is just ball watching again and loses track of a couple players. Come on. Ryan Kevin sees the short stick, goes right at him. Ryan Kevin here with a nice alley dodge and a shot. CSM kept it close in the first half. Howard outscored the Hawks 11-1 in the second half to get the win. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Just a dominant game at the faceoff X. How are you able to have such a great game today? A lot of it was just a lot of rep, uh, reps and practice and just working hard with uh, Coach Lithicum on, you know, at practice and just going against a bunch of great guys at practice like Anthony Pagnata and Ryan, you know. So, Mr. Chu, you dealt out some great assists in this game. What's your team looking to do on offense this season? Um, we're looking to hold the ball more, being more patient on the offense. Um, no rushes, uh, no forcing the middle, even though we got some great um, Canadian finishers like Jared and um, Dylan. But um, mainly just being patient, you know, looking for great shots. Yep. So talk about your assists in this game. What's your, how were you able to have such a great vision out there today and work the ball to your teammates? Well, um, luckily, um, both my assists, I, was, uh, I have shorties on me. So um, 
I was uh, able to uh, dodge my guy, run by him, um, just get a great separation, and uh, just keep my heads up, uh, look down the field, and just find Cody and uh, Jared. Mr. Bishop, how are you and your teammates able to prevent CSM from clearing the ball in this game? A lot of it was just getting to our spots quick on the rides and just working really hard and, you know, working our tails off and getting to the ball carry, you know, and just trying to pressure him as much as possible to force the turnover. All right, gentlemen, congrats on the big win and best of luck going into the Suffolk game. Thank you. Right, thank you, sir. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. It's time for a classic Maryland-New York battle. The Dragons take on Suffolk. Five of the last seven meetings in the Howard Suffolk series have been decided by two goals or less. Two of the last three games went to overtime. Howard beat Suffolk in OT last year. The Dragons haven't beat Suffolk in back-to-back -back seasons since they did it in 2007 and 2008. Mike, what do you expect to see from the Dragons? Well, Coach Faust really values a patient and deliberate offense. Uh, so you can expect to see some specific sets and plays that will move the ball from the strong side to the weak side quickly. I also think we can expect to see the Dragons take advantage of their size. Dylan Riley and Austin Mitchell are two players that really use their size to their advantage. Suffolk enters the season ranked eighth in the NJCAA poll. The Sharks have won three of their last four meetings with Howard, and they dress 33 players, so a slight numbers advantage over Howard. Mike, what do you expect to see from Suffolk? Traditionally, Suffolk has been a very talented team and uses some creative offense to score goals. They're a typical Long Island team that's physical on both ends of the field, and they play a traditional zone defense that can be hard to break down at times. Uh, they're a smart team, and they'll take advantage of the mistakes that the Dragons make, especially early in the game. It's a top 10 showdown. Howard takes on Suffolk. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First quarter, Andrew Indemeo draws the pole up top, takes it down the alley. He's met by two more poles, passes behind to Brett Daigle. He feeds it to the open man, Bobby Saparito, and he gives Suffolk the lead. Excellent pick by the Suffolk player to start the play. Good ball movement through X to the back side to give the shooter room and time. Howard is already a man down and now another flag is on the field. Key ground ball here by Suffolk leading to an unsettled situation. Suffolk does a good job finding the open man. It's a terrific start for the Sharks. They score on each of their first two possessions. Suffolk is in a zone defense here. The best way to attack this zone, or any defense, is good ball movement from the strong side to the weak side quickly. Good ball movement leads to an open shot on the weak side. And Cody Martin finishes the ball, gets Howard on the board. After a Suffolk failed clear, Howard's back on offense, and the Dragons go to Dylan Riley. A good individual effort by a big, strong tag in here, using his size to take advantage of an uneven matchup. After a Howard face-off violation, Suffolk gets possession, but not for long. Jerron Brooks and Paris Williams collapse on the ball carrier. Tyler Workman wins the ground ball for Howard. Tight defense from the Dragons. Workman passes to Williams. Looking to clear it, keeps his head up. Fires the crossfield bomb to Ronald Carney, who makes the catch. Improves his angle. Overhand rip. Carney gives Howard the lead, and the Dragons are fired up. Good ground ball play here by Howard that led to that excellent transition. After a man down defensive stand for Suffolk, here comes Jay Ricardo in the clear. Passes to Chris Reese behind. He deals out the assist. Reese finds Greg Dixon right on the crease. Tie game. Dragons defense gets caught sleeping here a little bit. Yeah. Good transition by Suffolk. Suffolk seems to be sticking with that zone defense and they get caught ball watching here again. Austin Mitchell makes some pay, gets to the crease and finishes and the Dragons regain the lead. First possession of the second quarter. Howard won the faceoff. Here's Jerron Brooks. Austin Mitchell now. Dragons use just a simple pick and roll play here to create a goal scoring opportunity. Dragons do a good job of isolating the defensive midfielder with some simple weave play. Ensuing faceoff looks like a violation on Suffolk. On any stick being used in a faceoff, there has to be a single wrap of tape six inches down from the head of the stick and of a contrasting color. Delay of game because of the illegal faceoff stick. Dragons take advantage of a quick restart to take a three goal lead. A 3 0 run for Howard over the last three minutes. Momentum now belongs to the Dragons. Reese up against Tyler Workman. Reese takes it behind goal line extended. Good individual play by Workman to cause the turnover. Later in the possession, here's Jared Riley. Some excellent two-man play by Cody Martin and Jared Riley. Allow allows Riley to go one-on-one -on -one against a short stick to the goal. Martin with his ninth goal of the season. Martin has developed into a consistent scoring threat for Howard. 6-11 remaining in the second quarter. Howard has scored four unanswered. Daigle draws the pole behind the cage. Zach McElroy allows the Suffolk player to go topside here. Always dangerous when you're in close like that. And Daigle cuts the lead to three. Suffolk's able to recapture some momentum late in the half. 
big save from Ryan, but he's unable to control the rebound. Eight players vying for the ground ball. Mitchell wins it. Overhand rep and Ryan with the save, his fifth of the game. Suffolk scored late in the second, and we have a two-goal game. Second half. Each team serving one-minute penalties. We're five on five. Suffolk is staying in that zone. Here the Dragons do a good job of attacking one side and getting the ball to the back side quickly for an open shot. Common misconception, when players are slow, you should play a zone. When it's really better the other way around. It's hard to cover a lot of ground when you're in a zone and you're not that fast. Ensuing faceoff, Anthony Pagnotta wins it to himself. Even with the new faceoff mechanic, Anthony Pagnotta is still dominating at the X. Four minutes remaining in the third. Jerron Brooks dodges, draws the slide, keeps his head up and feeds it to Riley. He scores. Terrific assist from the sophomore out of boys' lap. Dragons continue to do a good job of attacking with that dodge and moving the ball to the backside quickly. Howard's defense pitching a shutout in the third quarter. Jake Jacobson goes to Saparito in the middle of the field. Paris Williams with the stick check. And Andrew Cilio puts an end to the Suffolk scoring chance. Fourth quarter, Howard just scored. Pagnata has now won the last five faceoffs. He's unbeaten at the X in the second half, allowing Howard's offense to have a lot of time with possession, making Suffolk play extra defense. Later in the possession, Mitchell up against a short stick. He's bulldodged by Austin Mitchell to get his hands free for that ripper. Howard has scored four unanswered, 11-5 Dragons with 13-15 remaining. Next faceoff, Pagnata is on a different level right now. Six consecutive faceoff wins. Pagnata is doing what he does best winning the face off and heading straight for the goal. Draws a foul and he still manages to score. Riley picks up the junk off the rebound and shows some flash with that behind the back score. Howard outscores Suffolk 9-0 in the second half. 16-5 is your final. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Mr. Emery, what was the key to shutting out Suffolk in the second half? Um, well, offense having a lot of possession, a lot of possession time with the ball. Um, other than that, it was tight, communicative defense and just uh, played them hard, out hustled them. Uh, Mr. Pagnata, just a dominant game. What was the key to having such a, a big game today for you? Uh, well, I haven't been having that great of a season versus um, on a dog in my first game, so I've just been taking a lot of reps by myself in my house and then getting a lot of reps out here during practice and stuff and just getting back to the way I used to be. So you were here last year when it was an overtime game against Suffolk. What was the difference today, a blowout win? Uh, I think we came out more prepared. Last year we uh, went up there. It was extremely cold. Uh, a lot of people weren't really had their heads into it, I don't think, last year. Um, but at the end of the game, we clicked, came back, won. We were down, I think, three or four goals right there in the last couple minutes. And that's just the way this team came out and started to play. So I believe we just came out ready, came out prepared. Gentlemen, congrats on a big win. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. For Dragons Layer Update, I'm Matt Stovall. It's time for women's lacrosse. My guest has posted a winning regular season record in each of the last three seasons, a program first for HCC Women's Lacrosse. She is also a licensed official for high school and club lacrosse in Howard and Carroll counties. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Diana Carey. Welcome, coach. Thank you, Diane. Tell me, how have your practices been going thus far? Well, we've had, you know, we've struggled a bit um, between the weather being so, so cold and, of course, the tons of snow. Um, it, that and combined with just trying to get the girls all on the same page. It's, it, we've been struggling a bit, but we're really working towards it, and I think that uh, we're almost reaching that corner. Tell me a little bit about the, the makeup of your team. They come from all different levels, don't they? Yes, they do, absolutely. I have some very experienced girls. I also have some brand new to lacrosse. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I don't mind having that difference uh, in experience, um, but I'm trying to get them all is, is to buy into giving 100% to practice and improving. And, you know, as long as you're giving 100%, you're going to get better and nobody can ask for more than that. So we're just trying to work towards that at this point. So what are you hoping to accomplish this year? You've been around the league for X number of years now. Um, you've got a brand new team with a lot more first year players and freshmen than you do second year players. So you changed some goals maybe, but what, are, what do you want to accomplish this oh, year? Our goal is still to be champions um, in our region. There's no question. I think all of the schools right now are struggling a bit with numbers. Um, you know, with a lot of starts of Division II schools, they've really gobbled up a lot of players. So I think all of us within our, our conference are struggling a bit with the, you know, with the number concept. It's always fun to watch you on the sidelines, and I'm looking forward to watching your team play this year. So good luck, Coach. Thank you very much, Diane. Coach Carey's Dragons battle Suffolk next. Let's go to Mike Leshner. 
Thanks, Diane. Our analyst played varsity lacrosse at Wild Lake High School. While there, she was one of their top scorers and an elite 300 camp alum. You might recognize her from Dragon Close Up. It's a pleasure to welcome Mary Lee Adams. Thanks, Mike. Coach Carey's Dragons enter the game ranked fifth in the NJCAA preseason poll. Howard hammered Essex on opening day, scoring a 15-7 win on the road. Mary Lee, describe Howard's game. Howard's strength is their speed. They do a great job of moving the ball down the field, beating their defenders, and then working the ball from the outside to get the quick passes off into the center to finish. Their play calling is very fast. They don't seem like a selfish team to me. I like that they're able to just go in for the goal if they see it, and they're also able to work the ball around and find the cut-ins. They play good man-on-man -man defense, and they're able to double cover when needed and create turnovers. Suffolk enters the game with a 1-0 record. The Sharks are coming off the biggest win in their young history. Suffolk scored a double overtime upset over two-time defending Region 20 District B champion Anne Arundel. Mary Lee, what do you expect to see from the Sharks? Well, Suffolk's strength is definitely their size. They work the ball around the goal more, and they set their plays up from behind the goal. Their defense can be intimidating, though, because of their size and aggression but they're slower than Howard. They have good stick skills and some strong arms on the offense, so it's definitely gonna be a physical game. Both teams are coming off big wins. Howard and Suffolk take the field next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, Charlotte Wilkinson goes to Erica Heafy. Heafy dodging, stops on a dime and finishes high. Heafy did a great job using her body to spin out and finish the play with a goal. Rebecca Coglin, Katja Randazzo now. Draws two defenders, passes it outside. Good play call by Coach Carey, working the ball outside for the long pass into the center to Heafy. Howard is doing a really good job of moving the ball. They're bringing it down on the outside. They're working it to the inside to get the shots off. Suffolk needs to play tighter defense. They're giving them too much room to get the ball off. Howard not giving Suffolk any room. Opportunistic ride from Heafy and Michelle Sparling. Suffolk turns it over. Randazzo jumps on the ground ball, hustles towards the goal, changes direction, frees up a right, slips it past the goalie for a goal. Sabina Dorr, nice face dodge, gets underneath, gets to the goal and cuts the lead to two. Dorr does a good job using her left to outplay the Howard defenders. Incomplete pass on Howard's offensive end. Randazzo with another heads up ground ball keeps the possession alive. Randazzo does a great job rolling the crease and setting up the play for Coglin to finish strong. Howard is doing a great job of moving the ball and setting up quick plays that seems like it's hard for Suffolk to defend because they're not giving them any time. Howard has outscored Suffolk 3-1 over the last seven minutes. After a stop on defense, here's Rachel Hunter taking it up for Howard. Gets to the middle of the field, draws the slide, passes it to Coughlin. What a strike down low to Wilkinson. Excellent pass, Wilkinson puts it away. Second half, Howard scored three and gave up two in the last 13 minutes, keeping their distance on the scoreboard. Dragons with a five goal lead. Suffolk setting up their offense much slower pace than Howard. Suffolk does a good job of working the ball in and finding the open man for a goal. Nice play call by Suffolk to break up the man-on-man -man defense. 22 minutes remaining. Howard answered with another goal. The lead is back to five. Suffolk has yet to score back-to-back -back goals in this game. Howard has countered immediately after every Suffolk goal. Look how fast Howard is moving the ball around. Randazzo does a good job working the ball behind the goal and then passes it to Sparling. Howard's play calling seems to be what's setting them apart. Coughlin totally outruns her defender and is able to work it into the middle for a fast play. Howard is more going straight to goal, and it's working for them. It's always nice when a coach lets you use your passing and skills to take it straight to goal instead of having to always set up the plays more behind the goal. Suffolk is trying to do the same thing Howard is doing, but the defense is double covering their ball carriers. Right there, see? She couldn't even get the pass off because the defense was so tight. Coughlin is doing a good job of covering her left. She's fast, and she just takes it in and runs with it. Coglin single-handedly clears the ball and creates the unsettled situation. Coglin scans the field. Completes the pass to Heafy. She turns and fires. Howard thriving off assisted goals. A five-assist game for Rebecca Coglin. 8.50 remaining. Door behind the cage. Looking to feed. Ellie Garvey breaks it up and pushes it in the direction of her defense. Coglin secures the ground ball and then her speed takes over. Coughlin seems to be setting up the plays using her speed to beat the Suffolk defenders and get the quick passes off for the goal. She didn't even have to bring it in. She just gets around the defenders with her speed and then she pops it off. Howard scored 17 goals off 27 shots, shooting 62% in this game. Howard wins 17-14. Let's go to Matt Stovall. That was a terrific win. Uh, Erica, what was the key to getting this win today? 
Um, well, we really were working on smart transitions, riding on the transition, um, smart passes, uh, slowing it down once we got it on offense, um, and just running slow break so that um, our midfield could get some rest. All right, so I've heard surrounding the program, there's been you know people saying, oh, we don't have enough players. Um, we're having difficulties at practice. And then I heard there was a talk. Um, Diane came to come and speak with everybody. Can you, what can you tell me about that, Katya? It was a, a, the big thing was just make sure um, that at, through the games, through practices, everything we do through the program, that we give our 110%. Because a lot of times we were not really giving us our all, and we have so much, um, we have a lot to be uh, capable of, and um, we just want to be to our full potential. Erica, have you seen any change since that talk? Um, yes, a lot. Before, we were giving half effort. We weren't putting our hearts in. Um, you know, we are low on numbers, so our midfield runs the full game. Uh, we don't have subs for midfield. And since that talk, I've really seen, like, the effort come up, the energy, the positive um, the positive. Yeah, with Mark's feedback. Yeah, it's just everything, everything has been uh, – we've been meshing Very much cold. better and – we're just giving a lot more effort, which really shows on the field. What does this win do for your confidence and the team's confidence? Um, it boosts it a lot. Now we know that we are capable of beating these good teams. We know that we don't need a lot of numbers to do that. Uh, all of us have a lot of potential. We're great players. We just need to work as a team and play smart. So that's what we're doing. and It's working. Yeah, it's working. So far, it's yeah. working. So. Very excited for that. Yeah, season. I think before we were just struggling. We we didn't have the mindset that we could do it because we're we were low in numbers. But now that we know we can do this, and we don't need a lot of players to do it, so it's great. So what else contributed to that mindset change? Um, pep talks from coach, pep talks from uh, the captains. We we want it. We we have the drive to do it, and we have we have all of the players. We really really want it this year. So that's all that it takes. Congratulations on the big win. Really set a message. Congrats, ladies. Thank you Thank so you. much. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. It's time for track and field. My next guest brought home Howard Community College's first national championship. Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. Coach, tell me, how do you think your team is performing this year so far? We're doing pretty good so far. We took a, a little hit with the weather, like I guess most programs. We've been able to get to a few indoor meets, and we remind our students that uh, these teams are getting ready for an indoor conference championship while we're just starting. But we just want to see where they are, what they've been doing with their training, and a good starting point for the outdoor season. Now, since you're in charge of those distance runners and middle distance runners and all those runners, talk to me about your distance runners. Um, how do they look this year? They're, they're looking very good. Uh, again, we had a strong sharing to fall from cross country, and a lot of that is carrying over into the spring. Uh, Gary Simoliak will be one of the top returners in the steeplechase in 5,000 meters. Brooks Ward, again, qualified for the 10 last year, and, and we're expecting great things from Brooke. And Caroline, Caroline Hayden, who was second to 10,000, uh, she had a breakthrough cross-country season placing in All-American status. So we're hoping she'll do it again in the 10,000. Wow. So let's talk about the women's program. Right. We have not a lot of numbers as usual, right? No, we, we don't have numbers. Um, again, our sport, as with any sport, there has to be a serious commitment made. And, and at times, if they can't make it, and decisions have to be made, and sometimes people just need to walk away. But, but the, the people that we do have, um, Ashley Dolgoff, again, returning national champion to 400 meters. Uh, as I mentioned before, Caroline Hayden in the 10,000. Uh, a new bright face is Mary Hurd from Marriott's Ridge, uh, a quality thrower. So we'll make a little impact. Uh, I mean, remember the one year when we had Cherise Green, uh, a stellar student athlete. She placed fifth as a team by herself. So, you know, if you get the right people in the right spot, then good things will happen. So what do you hope to accomplish this year? Uh, again, top five in both programs. Um, a few All-Americans. Uh, Howard has a strong reputation for being a, a quality program and a tough program. In the early years, they said, oh, Howard's here, nice group of guys. Then as things progress and develop, people start going, man, Howard's here, and they know that they're going to have their hands full that day. Well, I wish you luck the rest of the season and, yep. and looking forward to seeing what Howard Community College can do once again at the Nationals. Great. Thank you, Diane. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for this month's Dragon Close-Up. The HCC men's lacrosse team has a strong roster this season with players coming from all over the country and even Canada and England. Two of these international players are Dylan and Jared Riley, hailing from Windsor, Canada. 
they bring along their experience playing semi-professionally, and they also have another advantage, their brothers. Men's lacrosse coach Eric Faust has made it a priority to expand his recruiting efforts. So how did two brothers from Canada end up at a junior college in Columbia, Maryland? I was talking to a coach from a different school four-year program, and I didn't have a course that I needed to get in there. So he was friends with Coach Faust from back home, and then they got in contact, and Coach Faust sent me an email. I was actually going to uh, the University of Windsor. I attended there for two and a half years. It wasn't for me, like, I was struggling in school and stuff like that, and I really wanted to play lacrosse. Dylan came out on a visit last January and, and committed, and his brother came with him. And Jared is 21 years old, so he just has one year of eligibility, but he decided to come too. And so, very fortunate to get, you know, the tandem of uh, Riley Brothers. This isn't the first time the Riley brothers have taken the field together. Dylan and Jared grew up playing box lacrosse, an indoor game played with fewer players, no long sticks, in a much smaller space. And with cross checks and moving picks legal, it's a little more violent. Yeah, it's a lot more small and in tight and like a faster paced game. Where out here it's more spread out, so like it's, you're not running into as many people. Dylan and Jared both have very good stick skills. Box players focus only on their strong hand because they're usually on one side of the floor and they don't have to put the stick in their opposite hand. But Dylan and Jared came to me in the fall and they both did not have lefts. And they spent literally from November, January, or November, December, January working on their off hands and now their off hands are, are, are good. Dylan and Jared may have had to work on their weak hand, but their strong stick skills and fast paced approach have not only helped them in HCC, but have also pushed their teammates to expand their style of play and step outside of the box. Dylan and Jared, they're one of a kind. I remember we went to uh, practice at Cedar Lane one day just to just shoot around. It was actually my first time playing with them. They're throwing behind the backs. You see them shoot these crazy shots. It was just something that I never played with. I've seen on video, but it's just something I never played with personally. And it really helped me expand my game. Box cross is a completely different game to the field game. So putting Jared and Dylan out on the field is completely different. But it's great to have them around because it helps your game. Sibling rivalry can lead to a sense of competition and jealousy. Dylan and Jared could have easily gone down that path. Instead, they've used their bond as an advantage, creating a two-man strategy. We actually like playing together because we, we have a good chemistry between the two of us. We're both right-handed too, so we're both normally on the same side of the field or floor. Like over this past year at Box, we, we really developed like a two-man, just me and him kind of working how to play together. And they definitely know where each other are going to be at all times, but um, no, they don't have a rivalry. Maybe little words here and there. They're always looking out for one another, and they never put themselves above, above each other. You can tell it's a true brotherly love, and when they get on the field, it's like they might yell at each other, but they know that person can do better. And they always want to push that other one to do, uh, the, be the best that they can be. Coach Faust's efforts to recruit internationally seem to be paying off, and with the Riley brothers bringing their unique style and experience to the team, they could be the Dragons' secret weapon this season. I'm Mary Lee Adams for Dragons Layer Update. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash hccdragonsports. An all-new Dragons Layer Update premieres Friday, May 8th on HCC TV. Thanks for watching, and remember, Go Dragons!